I feel like I have a pissed off look on my face already. Hi guys, I was planning on addressing this at uh, just like in the end of my vlog that I've been filming today and it just felt too serious and I'm just so fucking pissed that it was the energy shift of just like everything that I did yesterday versus the topic of this video. Just do not fit in the same video. It needs to be an isolated conversation. I have been going back and forth over the last 48 hours on if I should insert myself into this situation, this drama. I'm not someone who is typically at the center of drama, but this just hits too close to home for me to stay silent about. And I still, 48 hours later, I cannot wrap my head around the situation. And it honestly, it's ruined my last couple days. Like I just cannot fathom the mind state that you need to be in to make this decision. I can't process it. I truly cannot process what kind of human can do this. I'm going to leave a link to the original video where a YouTube couple recaps how they put their dog down, their healthy nine-year-old bull terrier down because of an incident that occurred in their home where they failed to set boundaries for their child and their dog who has obvious past unaddressed trauma that was their responsibility to correct and rehab and set their dog up for failure and now he's gone. And there is nothing that anyone can say or do to bring this dog back. So if you haven't watched the video, um, maybe pause the video, go watch it, come back and and you can share my anger. I um, initially watched this video in disbelief. I watched it again in anger, just sheer seeing red anger. And I watched it a third time to just collect my thoughts. I wrote a few things down verbatim that I wanna touch on because not only is it the most dangerous misrepresentation of the bull terrier breed that I feel personally responsible that I need to set straight. It's just not fair to the breed. And I know pit bull owners and all of the bull breeds face this kind of like literal discrimination on a daily basis and I just don't understand how you can raise a bull terrier for nine years and still have this completely incorrect view on how a dog can be bred for a certain violent activity that is just in their blood. It's in their DNA. Know the fuck it's not. I also spent the entire day talking to different leaders of rescue organizations, to different dog trainers, just to make sure that the information that I want to be able to provide someone who might find themselves in a similar situation and understands that euthanizing a member of their family, their pet, their loved animal in their home is not the only option. One of the trainers that I spoke to today said that 99.999% of dogs can be rehabbed. Dogs that have bitten people's faces off. I have a friend who works with a rescue all the time. She's met dogs that have, you know, severe, like literally ripped a face off, who have ripped limbs off, hands off. And these dogs, are rehabbed and they are treated for their trauma, they are treated for their stress, and they are able to live a happy, healthy, and regular life. It is possible if you put the time and the energy, you don't even need the money. And this YouTube couple has the money. They have access to any trainer that could have rectified this situation. There are limitless resources to training. And the reason that I keep coming back to training is that based on all the information provided, there is clear, clear evidence that this dog had some serious trauma from a very young age that went completely untreated. There are just so many free training resources that I personally, I would go to any length. I would go to any length before killing my dog to ensure that they could live a safe and happy life within my life. And if that didn't work, you have the option to rehome. They stated in their video that they would be liable for any incident that might occur in someone else's home, which is completely false. There are certain rules and regulations that differ state by state, but there are always rescues that give you the option to sign the liability over to the rescue. And it just sounds to me that the time and the energy into finding other options was maybe just a little too complicated. It was a burden. God damn y'all, I am so, I'm, I'm just heated. I'm heated, I'm so, I just, I can't, I just can't. I'm mentally, I physically, I, Okay, so let's start with the misconception that specific dog breeds are just bred to do a specific violent act. Pitbulls have lockjaw, bull terriers were born for fighting. Trauma can happen to any animal at any age, as it can with humans. And if that goes untreated, any breed can be a dangerous or violent or aggressive breed. Obviously, when you go to like the breeds Wikipedia page, it'll be like, oh, golden retrievers are loving, family friendly, da 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 da. There can absolutely be traits that are shared 
shared amongst the same breed. And typically it's the positive thing. So bull terriers are known to be very silly and charming and just like lovable clowns. And people are so quick to embrace the characteristics that fall on the positive side of a dog. But at the end of the day, any breed can have behavioral issues if they experience trauma that goes untreated. So something verbatim that they said is that it's something that can happen with the breed. Again, insinuating that the breed was born to be aggressive, that the breed is born to be violent. It's in their DNA. These are the dogs that are used to hunt hogs in Australia. I don't know what the fuck is happening in Australia, but I do know that it has been since the mid 1800s since bull terriers have been used for any kind of violent activity. I have a bull terrier who is one of the sweetest and most docile dogs that I have ever met in my entire life. Someone who is dog obsessed and has come in contact with so many dogs. I personally, and I'm sure that I'm a little biased, I think that I have one of the sweetest dogs. And so I know that some of you may be thinking, oh, it's easy for you to say that like all bull terriers are so sweet because your bull terrier is sweet. It just can happen to any breed. It's not like take the breed out of the picture. Behavioral issues, trauma, the same way that it can happen with humans. It can fuck an animal up. And so we'll get into the obvious lack of training and rehabilitation that this dog obviously needed and never got. They also stated verbatim, and this is the reason why he has now been euthanized, is that he didn't attack the child. The child tried to take food from him. And then that was also followed by he bit him in the face and it wasn't that bad. It was just a little mark on his face. It was just a little mark on his face, but now the dog is dead. Make it make sense. If you know that your dog has aggression issues or possessiveness and there's a situation where you're allowing your child to take food from your possessive and potentially aggressive or reactive dog, that is setting up everyone in that situation for failure in an unsafe environment. And so based on, again, the verbatim lines and statements that were delivered by the YouTube couple, I'm gonna give you some insight into why I personally am making a probably pretty accurate assumption that this dog needed to have his trauma corrected and rehabbed. Um, okay, so he was a dangerous animal outside the walls of my house. Probably a sign that he needs a little bit of training so that he can go out and also experience the world and enjoy his life. He was an outside animal that I had to keep inside. He was attacked as a puppy. Hello, that is the number one biggest red flag. That is the biggest red flag. Any kind of behavior that your dog exhibits that, you know, is maybe a little bit of a red flag when they're a puppy needs to be corrected immediately. Moose had a phase where he was protective and guarding over his food, some of his high value treats, and immediately, immediately, I didn't even reach out to a trainer. I went online, found resources, and worked for weeks on weeks to ensure that that never happened again. And to be very clear, I am not a dog trainer. I don't pay for season or Milan to come to my house and make my dog this like magically trained perfect dog. I have the internet. I went online. I looked at resources and I spent weeks and weeks correcting this behavior so that it wasn't something that developed into something bigger, something that puts myself or someone else in the home into a dangerous situation. He can't get out of the front door. He could have been put down several times. He's injured a couple of dogs. It just sounds, and correct me if I'm wrong, that there were so many many opportunities. There were nine years of opportunities to get help. You have the biggest platform. You have millions of followers. You're rich. You've got money. You have access to any kind of trainer that you could possibly want or need to correct this behavior. And maybe it is the time. Maybe it is the energy. Maybe it's the money. I don't know. But there is just no excuse for skipping all the other steps that come before putting your dog down and then having a photo shoot and making a video about it. Again, I'm making speculation from a dog owner, from a bull terrier owner, um, from an outsider's perspective. And nothing that I say or do will bring this poor dog back. But I truly cannot wrap my head around the lack of empathy for this animal that obviously had trauma and stress and lived a very restrained life. This whole situation just screams irresponsibility. I obviously do not have children of my own, but I have firsthand experienced friends that are able to have successful 
households with dogs and young children because of the boundaries they set. There was one line in particular, well, I mean, the whole video is fucking triggering, let's be honest, but the line that was apparently delivered to them by some kind of professional or someone at the Humane Society, you're so lucky this didn't result in something worse. This is the most insane attitude that I could ever imagine to surround this situation. And to be honest, they're not wrong. This was a ticking time bomb that went unattended. And because of the lack of responsibility as dog owners, the bomb went off. And now the dog is gone. <sighs> I, I, y'all. As a dog lover, a bull terrier owner, and someone who's so familiar with the breed, this just triggers me in a thousand different ways. I, I think just at the end of the day, if you are okay with euthanizing a dog, a family member, someone that you've had for their entire life for nine years with no energy and no attempt to find them a better and whole life for them to live out their life, either with training and your own family or a family who is willing to put in the time and effort to give them the life that they deserve, you just shouldn't have a dog. You really just shouldn't have a dog. And so anyways, that's my personal opinion. Uh, let me know where your head is at because my head is 4,000 miles in the direction of anger currently. Um, this is something that has truly shaken me to the core. I hopefully was able to form words to make this uh, partially educational and then also holding someone accountable for something that they chose to make very public in the first place. I'm just not okay with this and this is something that I've chosen to use my platform to speak out about because in my books this is just absolutely not okay in a thousand different ways. So uh, that is that. Glad that I didn't tack this on to a very regular daily vlog and I will see you soon in that, uh, in that upcoming vlog. Okay, bye guys.